Hey guys, hope you're staying safe in quarantine. I'm back with more Hannibal because I just can't get enough. Really, it's that good. For those of you that haven't checked out my previous overall Hannibal review, please make sure you check it out. It's in the description box below. This review will be solely based on season 2 and will contain spoilers. As mentioned in my previous review, one of my biggest complaints from season 1 was Jack Crawford and Will not picking up signs that Dr. Hannibal Lecter is a psychopathic cannibal. I guess a lot of viewers had the same thought because this season actually starts off with a fight scene between Dr. Hannibal and Jack and continues with all the events leading to the day of confrontation. Season 2 does a great job of putting you inside Will's head. Will starts doubting himself on whether he actually committed the murders or not, but as we all know, Hannibal planted the evidence against him. The internal battle that Will has makes this season even more exciting. And talking about terrifying, I've seen many scary movies and shows, but I'm one of the types that never gets scared. In fact, I saw Midsummer and the Nun alone in the entire theater like it was nothing. Yes, it was sad that the theater was empty, and I had no choice since there were no good movies out at that time, but I have to admit, Hannibal gave me the chills. And talking about chills, episode 2 is one episode that sticks out, where a killer is abducting people and injecting them with heroin, and then he's sewing their bodies together to create a palette. How artful, right? What kind of sick mind comes up with this stuff? <laughs> and if that's not enough for you, one of his abductees does not die from the heroin injection which is meant to kill him since this abductee has developed a tolerance from prior use. He finds himself stitched together with many bodies and breaks himself loose while ripping his skin off in agonizing pain and tries to escape. I mean, just put yourself in that victim's shoes. In that scene, you genuinely feel the fear the victim has and the show does an excellent job of putting you in his shoes. I have yet to see something as terrifying as that scene. And let's not forget the classy cooking of Hannibal. Okay, it's one thing there is a cannibal running around and eating people. But it's another thing that he manages to cook the meals like they're Kobe beef, often getting compliments from the people eating his meals. Another reason why Hannibal keeps getting better. At time, it feels as if he's better suited to be a chef than a psychiatrist. The mind of Will is shown in an artistic brilliance. He seriously doubts himself but wants to believe that he's not a killer. His mind's inner demons are shown as hallucinations, which are very artistic and terrifying as well. Will is shown to fight his own innocence in court while not knowing the truth himself, and knowing that the odds are against him added another layer of brilliance in Season 2. Will's mind is both his strength and weakness, and Will's mind is one thing, but the bromance of Will and Hannibal is on another level. One theory is that Hannibal framed Will in hopes of Will turning into believing that it's okay to kill, but then he wanted him back out in the real world and not going to jail because he couldn't change his mind about killing being okay. <laughs> and Miriam last being discovered could have been one of the highest points of the season, but it turned out to be such a disappointment when she couldn't even identify Hannibal as the Ripper. She was abducted in his office and discovered the drawings that connected him to the killings, but then she kills Dr. Frederick instead because she mistakes him for being Hannibal. Seriously? It would have been better if she was never discovered. Seriously. Another plot hole that was very disappointing. Instead, Will being set from jail creates the most excitement. His absence from the crime scenes is felt in season 2 and you become eager for Will to return on the field where he can discuss his design. Season 2 also leaves some questions about the plot. Why did Hannibal frame Will if in the end he was going to try to save him? Why would Will open his mind up to Dr. Frederick? The same Dr. Frederick that testified against him in court? Why would Beverly Katz go investigating Dr. Hannibal alone, despite Will warning Hannibal is a psychopath and a very dangerous person? Why, why, why? <laughs> and if that's not enough, Dr. Anna Bloom comes to top it all. Dr. Anna Bloom proves that she drank the Kool-Aid as she sleeps with a psychopath. These plot holes make these characters feel like a bunch of buffoons working for the FBI but definitely not at that level. Will has been able to catch every serial killer. Why wouldn't you believe him when he says Hannibal is dangerous? If you can suspend your beliefs, this show remains to be enjoyable. Will continues to see Dr. Hannibal as this creature with horns and senses danger every time he's around him, but yet casually Will and Dr. Hector stroll along in the same car many times. Heck, Will even sends someone to kill Lecter, and Lecter does the same, both attempts fail and the dialogue Will says is, even Steven? Seriously? 
The story basically implies that if you can't beat Dr. Lecter, join him. But for me, it was hard to digest. And let's not forget the journalist Freddy Sounds. Somehow the journalist keeps surviving despite being in dangerous situations over and over again. I would really want her luck because she is one woman with Lady Luck always on her side. Her finally getting eaten in season 2 was excellent. She was one of the most annoying characters on television and they had to make her disappear so the ratings wouldn't continue to decline with her screen presence. But my happiness was short lived as it's revealed that she teamed up with Will to stage her disappearance to lure Hannibal and trick Hannibal into thinking that Will had joined the dark side. What a tragedy, I got excited for no reason. A lot of scenes are not explained in depth and requires a lot of deep thinking on the viewer's part. That's for you to decide if you like that or not. And talking about the season 2 finale, season 2 finale delivered more than the entire season could with Jack Crawford unfortunately dying in the house of Dr. Hannibal and Dr. Bloom being killed by Abigail who was quickly slaughtered as well. Abigail showing out of nowhere did not pique my interest as she was quickly forgotten, although it's implied that Hannibal brainwashed her and thus her killing Dr. Bloom. Hannibal's power of persuasion is extremely strong I must say, and Will was also attacked by Dr. Hannibal and his fate remains uncertain for season 3, but I got a hand she'll make it. The biggest surprise was actually when Dr. Hannibal gets on a plane and he's sitting with his psychiatrist Bedelia. Was she in on it the entire season? Will Will survive? Season 2 leaves us with so many questions and an appetite for more. But one thing I did learn is Hannibal wants a close audience to his crimes. Thus he keeps Bedelia, Will, and Abigail close to him. I mean, what's a performer without an audience, right? Thanks for watching guys. I definitely recommend that you check out Season 2 of Hannibal, even though it will require suspension of belief at times. Stay tuned for my review on Season 3. And please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe.